What did we have a look at in these starter questions? We had a look at this process called differentiation, right? When you differentiate something, you take a function like the three that we had a look at, and if your function's called, for example, f of x, what do we usually call the result? What name do we give it? Ishan? f dash x, perfect, right? This is what we call um, the result from differentiation, okay? Um, Depending on what you start with, if it's labeled differently, we end up with a slightly different label over here. If, we, if I said y equals, what would you call the, this result? Uh, you could call it y dash, you'd be using the same notation as here, but there's another way we can say it as well. dy and dx, and it's not like these one is better than the other, they're just different. Okay? But what's helpful is that each one sort of communicates something a little bit different. Um, underneath both of these, they're both massive abbreviations because mathematicians, famously lazy. We don't want to write the whole thing that's behind here because it takes forever. See if you remember. Let me start you off. This is how the real thing begins. There's lim, which stands for what? Limit, right? What's the thing that's underneath it? Do you remember? It's a, mm, so close. It's another letter. It's an H and it's approaching zero. We'll come back to that in a second. And then there's this monstrous fraction here. See if you can help me remember. I'll give you a start. F. X minus H. Uh, very close. X plus H, right? There is a minus sign though. It comes in next. Minus F of X. And then what's on the denominator? H. It's H. Okay, now. We have a name for this thing. This is called first principles. Very good. And you can see why we don't like writing it over and over again because it takes a long time. But it captures something very important. Number one, um, what you're going to get out of this is a function. It's got all kinds of function notation in there, right? But number two, the thing in this, like this fraction, it comes from color. It comes from comparing rise over run. Yeah? Rise over run. So this thing here, that dy, y is a vertical thing. That's what we mean by rise. Change in y, change in x is run. Okay. So this whole process of differentiation, it tells us something about gradient. Right? So we have our names here. You start with some function, you get the derivative. Or we might call it, if we wanted to emphasize the fact that it tells you about gradient, we call it the gradient function. Okay. So are you happy with this? Do you remember this? This is not, I mean, it's not been a while, it's been a while since we had a look at this, um, but it's not brand new stuff, right? Okay, now what we're having to think about today is taking this process, differentiation, and viewing it in another color. Viewing it from the opposite direction, okay? What if, instead of starting with this guy over here and then going through this process, right? What if we started from the other side? What if, for example, I gave you a derivative, right? And I said, hey, what was the function that it came from? What is the function that it came from? Now, this is the opposite of differentiation, right? So one of the names for this process, very, very unoriginal, but probably the most relevant one here is anti differentiation. I know, rocket science, right? Okay. We are, we are not differentiating. We are anti-differentiating. Okay. Now, say it again. Uh, this is a proper term because it is exactly what we're being described here. Now, We'll come to other languages. This is, you know, when we, whenever we introduce a new idea, right, you get lots of new language that comes with it. Okay, I'm very deliberately, number one, not telling you all of the language all in one hit. Number two, the language that I am going to introduce, I'm not going to fully explain it either. It's like the first scene in a movie. You're like, who's this character? Why are they doing that? Why are they angry? These all emerge as the movie progresses. Same deal here. Okay, now, I just said, what happens if I give you a, a thing, I tell you it's a derivative, and I want to know where it came from? Okay, well, we would say you go from the derivative to its original function. But what if the thing I hand you is not a derivative of any kind? What if it's just any old function? What would we call the thing that it came from? Now, we have another name for this. It's like derivative, but the opposite. Um, and it's a word we often associate with, like, evolution. We say the thing that it came from is the primitive, like a, like primitive or prehistoric humans, that kind of thing, right? So it's like, where did you come from? This is where it came from, okay? Now, 
as you can see here, us mathematicians, we, we try to avoid writing long words where we can, right? So I'm now going to lay on you the notation around this, but I'm going to tell you right now, it's weird and confusing. It asks more questions than it answers, okay? So we're going to tease the fact that I'm going to get to these answers later, but I want you to have the notation so you don't have to keep writing long words, okay? So, if you have some function, you remember, right? We introduced this notation here to indicate the opposite, right? Um, this is just a stretched out S. You see the original function appear, and then we throw in this notation. Where did we see this earlier? It's on the board already. Through differentiation, right? Uh, what's that tell you? It tells you differentiate and pay attention to the x's. You don't have to pay attention to x's if your function is to do with something else like t for time or p for population, you would pay attention to that. But that's what this is referring to here. Okay? Now, this guy here, this result here, this is the primitive that we're after. Do you have a question, Max, or are you just scratching your head? Okay, great. So, this is actually, you can make the heading now, this is actually what we're going to focus on. Yes, what? Sorry, what is the elongated S? We'll come to it. I'm just telling you it's an elongated S for now. Uh, this is what we're focusing on, the primitive function. Okay. Now, you have to be really, really careful with this idea of anti-differentiation, and I'm going to illustrate to you why. You know everything you need to know to do anti-differentiation, to find primitives. Okay? You know everything you need, but that doesn't mean you know how to do it. And I'm going to give you an illustration of it. At the top of your page right now, and I have to do this on a piece of paper, not on the whiteboard. You'll see why in a second. I'm going to ask you to do something, and I'm going to ask you to do it immediately without overthinking it too much. Okay, so I know you could take a long time to do this. I deliberately don't want you to. I just want you to give it your best shot in about, I'm going to give you about 10 seconds to do it. Okay, I want you to take your name, right? Not my name, but this is what I'm going to write. I want you to take your name and my whole name? your whole name, yes. And on your page, I want you to do your very best to write it upside down. Go ahead. Do it now. Oh, write it upside down. Okay, go ahead and write your name upside down. Okay. Like I said, I'll give you about 10 seconds. Some of you will find this easier than others, based on your name. Yeah, Max is mm. like the easiest. He just writes to wax. How do you do Yeah, so mine's pretty easy. That was okay. Because Moe. Some people, well, no, what's your surname? Come on. Come on. <laughs> By the way, if you did it, if you did it uppercase, that was slightly cheating because it's so much easier in uppercase. Okay. Oh. All right. I did my lowercase. Now, what I want you to do is, and lowercase is, <laughs> it's the way real people do it. Okay. I want you to have a look at your complete name, and just just look at it upside down for me now. Just have a look at it the way it's meant to be read. How did you go? Did it okay? Did it? Did your S's go backwards or your what letters did you get? <laughs> you didn't write your letters in the correct order. Okay. All right. Nice. Okay. All right. Now, who's who's proud of their result? By the way, who's like, yes, I nailed it. Okay, good. Now, shh. Here's the thing, right? To go through this process of anti-differentiation, to get a primitive, okay, you know everything you need to know, but because it's weird and sort of upside downy, okay, you'll end up doing things wrong just because your brain is so used to doing it the other way, right? This way, right? So let's have a look at a quick example and start to point out some of the challenges here. So,